I'm Mike Turner, Senior Designer with DG Design, and I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focused on VRAD usage within light project environments. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about VRAD interior setup for OpenGL visualization and the crossover into real time VR assessment. VRED OpenGL Imaging offers very quick imaging results without the need for ray tracing and for us forms the basis for real-time design assessment in VR. We're typically reviewing our designs at the client's premises and so we've chosen to run our VR setup on a portable workstation for ease of transportation and setup. This works really well for us with, with VRED and gives us a lot of flexibility for our clients but it means that we take a degree of care when we're setting up our VRED OpenGL file to ensure the scene is set up to run smoothly in VR and we're careful to balance overall image quality with frame rate speed so as not to um, inconvenience the end user. But if you on the other hand are running VR in a fixed location and can afford to do so on a high-end workstation you'll inevitably have more processing power available to you, which gives you increased opportunity to boost real-time image quality and frame rate. But it's worth noting um, that Autodesk are continually developing and promoting real-time capabilities and features within VRED. And these enhancements are often linked, they go hand in hand with ongoing graphics card and hardware advances. Um, recent improvements have helped boost real-time ray tracing, offer higher VR frame rates, better resolution output. So it's definitely worth you keeping an eye on your release notes to understand what's coming next. So for us, when we're producing an open GL setup, the first consideration is, is typically meshing. Um, we find that low or even coarse meshes work fine for most components we're dealing with. Uh, and we like to keep the tessellation quality as, as low as we dare. The less polys that there are in the scene will result in faster, runners, faster smoother running VR experiences, uh, which is particularly important if you're dealing with multiples of objects like train seats where you might have you know, 40, 50, maybe 60 in an interior. In terms of the general shader setup and assignment, it's, it's much the same as any other VRED activity. It's as per the stuff we do on exteriors. VRED has a lot of good libraries already, um, but there's also the substance materials coming along now, which uh, are great and offer a lot of potential. But some of these uh, rely on sort of quite heavy displacement maps and can run slowly in VR, so, so be aware of that. When we're developing our lighting schemes for the interior for OpenGL, we'll often work with rectangular strip lights. It suits what's going on with a lot of train interiors and we use those to simulate the longitudinal runs of lights you typically get on trains. Uh, this real-time lighting is, is really useful because it means that we can make adjustments in real time if we want to when we, we sit with the client going through the design in VR. We can move from day to night, we can adjust the ambient mood, we can look at client colour options and, and step through that whole process. Of course, within VRED, there's the option to bait lights in, uh, but there's no easy adjustment for us within the base license of VRED Design once baked. From what we understand in, in VRED Pro, uh, there's the option for texture-based baking, um, which allows you to show different options via variant sets using Python scripts. We've not yet tried this, but it sounds interesting and does offer an extra level of flexibility and realism. When we're laying out our interior work, we typically lay out uh, complex repetitive items like seats. We'll do that in VRED. We'll import one instance uh, and then sort of duplicate that throughout the interior because it means it's, it's easy for us to, to ripple the changes uh, throughout that interior space if we want to change a detail on one particular seat. But it also means we're not having to prep a large amount of data in alias, um, which is important when you're dealing with a train interior that's maybe got 65, 70 seats. It's a lot of work there in terms of getting things prepped. One, one little trick that we often do is on the exterior environment, if we're working with a HDRI map, is we'll apply motion blur to, to the overall dome uh, to simulate vehicle movement in our open GL renders. It gets just a little sense of motion going on throughout the windows. But if we're talking about VR and VR optimization, uh, for us in particular, it's a case of balancing 
overall image fidelity with, with that frame rate within VR and, and working with the hardware limitations that, that you might have. Uh, so when we're setting up the VR file and we're working through that, we'll run it with the statistics tab going in the top menu bar to when we're road testing the file, which allows us to assess the frame rates at all times. And in our experience, we found that if it dips much below 25 frames a second, your, your audience will definitely feel it. It'll, it'll perhaps be a little bit laggy or a little bit jerky and it, it can get a little bit unsettling. So it's about doing what you can to optimise the file. We generally try to avoid bump and displacement maps. We assign textures only to the diffuse colour channel where possible. And we do it with as few maps as we can. Um, we also try to avoid calculating shadows in real time. We use minimal baked in shadows where, wherever we need to, but we try to avoid a heavily baked model with shadows and everything as this inevitably again can lead to uh, slightly laggy lower frame rates within VR. Uh, for much the same reason we try to avoid multiple light sources as few as possible. You, you don't need many in order to assess the design and as far as prepping the data goes we ensure we've got as few nodes in the scene as possible and the file is structured very tidily uh, because again this can cause uh, lagginess and jerkiness in the frame. We've also found that some environments, the skyline, skylight environment, and sometimes HDRI maps, if they're particularly high resolution, can also slow down the frame rate in VR. So if your machine is starting to struggle, um, maybe consider switching back to the default uh, regular black and grey VRED Studio environment for your, your VR assessments. There's additional things you can do, like ensuring the real-time shadow is switched off. This should give you a decent jump in terms of performance in its own right. And you can try turning off ambient occlusion shadows. This, this might also help you a little bit. Backface culling also helps to switch off surfaces when they're not seen, uh, which again will save you a little bit and make frame rate run smoother, but you've got to make sure you've got your normals the right way around as, as anything where the normals are flipped, i.e. a purple surface when you're looking at it, when you're interrogating it, those will show up as missing surfaces when back face is operative. You can still play games with the level of anti-aliasing in the file. The, smooth, the more anti-aliasing you've got, the smoother it will look, but again, it may seem a little bit more laggy in real time. But um, play, play games with that anti-aliasing file, bring it up as much as you dare, um, but just back it off a little bit when your frame rate does start to lag. I've got to stress that each of these tweaks do degrade the perceived static image quality and sense of realism in VR, but, but we found that that trade-off is well worth it if, if it prevents the file from seeming at all laggy. Um, because in VR, you, know, you want to move around the scene, you're going to be moving your head quite quickly in some cases to look around that interior space. And we want to ensure wherever we can that it's a very smooth, very fluid experience, uh, because that can be more off-putting than pure image fidelity. But in terms of overall open GL image making um, and developing that for um, brochures or visualization work, you can develop very impressive results quickly. But like anything else, it's certainly worth practicing and experimenting with your setup to suit each project. And coming back to VR, it's definitely worth taking the time to optimize the file if you're planning on using it with your clients um, to ensure a smooth and enjoyable uh, review experience. Hopefully some of the tips I've outlined here will, will get you off to a, a good start and the, the very best of luck exploring OpenGL visualisation. Thanks for listening. I hope you find that interesting and informative and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks very much.